Walk people through like what are the sort of how to's sure. of getting to Jordan's mindset where you can want the ball back faster because you get the neurochemicals under control, you start telling yourself a different narrative. How can people do that? Yeah, yeah, great question. So um, the first one is that, again, we really wanna challenge everyone to become students of human behavior. And the start is to know, okay, when you're under pressure, how does it show up for you? What's your experience? And just kind of get clinical about it. Emotions, thoughts, physical sensations. So literally in those three categories, how does it show up? For me, it's when I get warm right here, mm. right? For other people, it's butterflies. I never really experienced that, but other people do. Must be nice. Yeah, yeah, maybe, exactly, right? So for me, you know, when I feel pressure coming up, then I need a strategy. So the book, as you, I think you know, is based on a study of 12,000 people over seven years, right? And we had 120,000 people rate these folks and try to understand what's going on, because they can rate them behaviorally, you know, how they show up. and. What's interesting is when you go into a pressure moment, A, no one's gonna be perfect, number one, but B, we were shocked at how many people took a haphazard approach to pressure. They didn't know there's an emerging science, which I get, but they didn't have tools. So they kind of get all serious about preparing themselves, understandably, on you know, what they wanna say, their ideas, the detail, but they don't prepare themselves. And here, physically. physically, and here's the problem. When people are making a buying decision, like people are buying us right now, or they're not buying us, right. in any job interview, presentation, whatever, they buy, you're buying us right now, just so you know, I hope you're buying what we're saying. But the criteria that they and anyone use is really three. People buy people, ideas, then product. But we think it's the other way around. We go in thinking, oh, I gotta know all the features and benefits right. of the product and the ideas. No, they're buying us. So we go in and we haven't prepared ourselves, but we over-prepare on stuff they don't care about as much. Mm. But we under-prepare on ourselves. Then all of a sudden, when we have those three you know, parts come up, emotions, thoughts, physical sensations, what happens is that we go, oh, I don't wanna feel that. So it doesn't, so pressure diminishes us in the moment and it doesn't feel good in the moment, right? right? So no wonder then we start to wrestle with it. And here's what happens, it's amazing. We start to wrestle, I don't wanna feel that, I don't wanna feel that, and now we lose a focus on the task at hand. Yes. That's why part of why we're diminished. So what we wanna do now is help people see it differently. Mm. So as opposed to, oh my gosh, and I'm gonna be judged, or this is a crisis or a threat, it's, oh, you're back. Oh, I guess my body's getting ready to perform. Right. Oh, and now I just, I, and, and then I, and we practice, mindfulness is a really big thing, but we help people be non-judgmental, non-reactive to this physical sensation they're experiencing. Oh, you're back, great. I guess my body's getting ready to perform. And by the way, then we, you know, on the next level up, it's, wow, this is exciting. I'm gonna live an adventure. Because the one thing you don't wanna leave in Olympics, as I say to athletes, with regret. You don't, that's the worst. You can lose, right. you can get close and lose, but you don't wanna leave with regret thinking, I played small, I didn't go for it. Right. So instead it's like, hey, I'm living an adventure. Let's go.